Hello chaps and chapesses, and today we're going to talk about 10 reasons to go to Iceland. There are many reasons why I love Iceland so much. It's one of those destinations that I travel to on a yearly basis. It's my annual salmon fishing pilgrimage. And there's something really special about being in the land of fire and ice and fishing for the silver tourists as they make their way up all the various different salmon rivers. Of all the salmon fishing destinations around the world, such as Norway, Russia, East Coast Canada and Iceland and Scotland, Iceland's one of my favorites. And there's a number of reasons why. So we're gonna discuss those today. My first reason is that from the UK, it's an incredibly easy destination to get to. It's a mere three and a half hours on a flight directly from London Heathrow straight into Keflavik. So that means that you can be on a one o'clock flight and you can be standing in the river trying to catch salmon by about five in the afternoon. Now that's extremely attractive. It's a very swift ride up there. Traveling around the country is very, very simple and it's a first world country. So everything works, it's very easy. Iceland as a country is fascinating to visit anyway, not only for its incredible geological structures and the fact that it's such a new country in some ways geologically, it's also because the people are so friendly. And any country which has salmon fishing reports that appear in the daily newspaper has got to be up there in my book. Salmon fishing is very much in their blood, it's part of their culture and it's part of their politics. And a huge proportion of the Icelandic population are salmon fishermen. One of the first things that really gets me going about Iceland is it's light tackle salmon fishing for the majority. Yes, there are some northern coast rivers and some southern rivers which would prefer to be fished with a two-handed rod, but the majority of the fishing is done with a single-handed rod, light tackle, light tiny flies, and the whole experience is very different to using a big two-hander and swinging big flies across some of the rivers in Norway or Russia. Being able to fish on these rivers and using very light tackle is extremely exciting, especially as an enormous proportion of the fishing that you do up there is visual. And that kind of brings me on to my second point, the visual element. These days when I'm fishing, whether it's for trout or any other species, I think what really gets me going more than anything else is to be able to see the fish that I'm trying to catch. I don't really mind what I'm fishing for as long as it's visual. The days of wanting to blind cast, um, I'm not quite so stimulated by. So the fact that this is one of those few countries where you can actually sight fish for Atlantic salmon and you can put small flies in crystal clear water over the top of fish, you can watch that fish's every single movement as he looks at that fly, figures out what he wants to do and quite often you'll see him rise up in the water column and then with hitch flies especially, take it like a dry fly off the surface. It really is extremely exciting. The third reason I love Iceland so much is there's an enormous variety of different rivers and different water to fish. So really whatever it is that you find particularly interesting, so whether you wanna swing small flies across a tiny stream or you wanna take a big two-hander and you wanna maybe throw that across a bigger river, not only is it all there, but it's all there in fairly close quarters. So you can actually quickly move from one river system to another if you so wish and really mix it up a bit. You have the West Coast rivers, which have got lots of fish, but maybe a slightly smaller average size. You have the North Coast rivers with a smaller number, but a much bigger average size. You have the East Coast rivers, which are a combination of the two, and you can still fish with very light tackle and smaller rods for bigger fish. And then you have the Southern rivers, which have got huge numbers of fish running in them. So all in all, you've got an enormous different variety of fishing just on the salmon front. Fourthly, I love the fact that you get an entire river system to fish. So by law in Iceland, all of the riparian owners have to form a syndicate. That syndicate is then leased out to one individual or entity who runs that particular operation. So when you go to an Icelandic salmon river, quite often you can fish it all the way from the sea pools all the way up to its upper margins. This is a really cool way to fish because it gives you a great view of how the river runs through the systems and because there's 
basically no trees in Iceland. A lot of it runs through rock, which creates incredible topography in the rivers and makes them really exciting to fish. My fifth reason is the way the fishing is organized. I touched briefly on how the river systems are set up, but there are fixed hours of fishing in Iceland. So you will fish from eight until 12, then you will have lunch, you will have a siesta, and then you will then fish from, from four until 10 at night because you have 24 hour daylight. So you can make the most of the fishing time that you have. And with that 12 hours of fishing a day, there's a long sessions and you can find yourself fully satisfied after the space of three, three and a half days. You've had enough, you're ready to go home. And by then normally you've caught quite a lot of fish. My sixth reason is the lodges and the operations themselves. They are very well organized, very well run, and the Icelanders take their food extremely seriously. So quite often you will arrive at a salmon lodge and the chef you will find has been seconded from some well-known hotel in Reykjavik and you are treated to fine three-course dining which you'd be pushed to find anywhere in the world. So that's one of those things which is a great treat to look forward to. My seventh reason is it's one of the very few countries that you can go to where you can share a rod. Now we all know that Pricing in Iceland is fairly expensive, but sharing a rod is how the Icelanders fish themselves. Each time that you purchase a rod, in inverted commas, on a salmon river, you are getting a room and you are getting twin beds in those rooms because they are set up to share. With a 12 hour fishing session, there's plenty of fishing. So actually it's a great way to go fishing with a mate but also save on cost because the rod share cost is really only the cost of the food and transfers. So you can bring the cost down dramatically by sharing a rod. This is ideal if you've got a great fishing buddy or maybe you want to bring a son or a daughter or a wife or a husband into the fold and bring them onto one of these rivers so that they can experience it for themselves. My eighth reason are the guides. The Icelandic guiding fraternity is a close, close knit brotherhood and you will quite often find that your guide is probably running a business in Reykjavik most of the year, but they all tend to take the time off in the summer to go and fish and to guide a lot of them. And they do it because they absolutely love it. And they love their rivers, they love the ecology of their river systems, and you will learn an enormous amount about fishing these rivers with your guide. And they all speak excellent English, obviously. So it's a great way for, to communicate and it's a brilliant way to learn their methods of fishing. You're gonna learn how to hitch and maybe upstream nymph for salmon and all sorts of other techniques which we don't normally use in other places around the world. So the guiding is one of those things I love most about it. My ninth reason is licensed is not only about salmon. I know that it definitely has a reputation for being one of the capitals of Atlantic salmon across the world, but it also has an incredible run of sea trout that run through the country in various different rivers and some of these can reach really large proportions pretty much kind of argentine proportions but it's in a destination which is only three and a half hours away so if you know where to look and which rivers to go fish and at what times you can have incredible sport on sea trout it also has some of the largest brown trout in the world in lake thingvallavatn and at certain times of the year, these big fish come up from the bottom chasing fry and you have a chance at catching a proper double figure brown trout. It's a bit like Jurassic Lake, I suppose, in Argentina. And then you also have phenomenal brown trout rivers. The brown trout strain in Iceland has been left over from the last ice age and you have some really large specimens lurking around in some of these rivers. One of my favorite ones is up in the north at uh, Laxadal and Mivisvit but there are many other famous trout rivers like the Mini Valley Laika and many of these will find specimen brown trout that you have the opportunity to take on dry fly and nymph. One of the big difference about the brown trout that you find in Iceland and the bigger brown trout that you find in other areas around the world is most of the fish in rivers are not feeding on other fish. They're not cannibals. They're actually feeding on midge, mostly chronomids, and also a huge selection of sedge pupae and various other insects. And that makes them really good fun to catch. But I warn you, make sure you're using fairly hefty leader or you may find that those trout will bite through it. There's also a great run of sea run Arctic char in certain rivers and char up in the highlands. So there's a huge variety of different fish to go and fish for. 
all of which present their own technical challenges and all can be extremely rewarding. I think my tenth reason for why I love fishing in Iceland so much is that because it is a first world destination, when we were faced with the recent situation with the pandemic that we were, Iceland was one of the first countries to sort themselves out from that regard and they managed to get a proper COVID testing system up and running at the airport very rapidly. This proved to be a massive success through the summer, which meant that even in these difficult times, it was easy to go to Iceland. Now, there's not that many countries where from either the east coast of America or, or from the UK and Europe are easy to get to, which have those kind of facilities and made it an easy break during the summer to go and get our salmon fishing fix. On the basis of this, that we have a huge amount of confidence knowing that if that ever happens again, we will know that they will be able to take care of it. Well, Iceland really has an awful lot to offer. It's one of my favorite spots for salmon fishing in the world and also trout fishing. It's a great spot to get to. And if you haven't tried it, I would highly, highly recommend that you consider it. It's also some phenomenally breathtaking landscapes. Well, as always, I hope you found this video useful. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.